Infectious diseases. Research. Medicine. Health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey everybody, this is Robert, and welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. Now, since early on in the COVID-19 pandemic, Lice Clinics of America have been reporting seeing an increase in head lice activity. So joining me today to discuss head lice, why the increases, and what can you do about it, is Krista Lauer, MD. Dr. Lauer is the medical director of Lice Clinics of America. Dr. Lauer, welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and start out with some of the basics about head lice. Uh, what are they and what do they look like? If if somebody was to see it in somebody's hair, what, what would they look like? Well, so head lice are a small parasite, and adult head louse is about the size of a sesame seed, so they're very tiny. And they live their entire life cycle exclusively on the human head. So you don't get them from pets or from inanimate objects, almost entirely from the human head. Um, they live by biting the scalp, and that's what eventually causes the symptoms of a head lice infestation. So they're super common, not something to be worried about, but people do get really freaked out when they consider head lice. Because a head louse is so small, they're really hard to see, it's more common to identify the eggs, um, which are cemented onto a hair shaft and look like little grains of sand that can't be moved. It's because they're really stuck on there, so they won't slide along the hair shaft like hair product or sand would. And that's probably the easiest way to, for people to identify an infestation is to look for the eggs cemented to a hair shaft very close to the scalp. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned that they're very common. How common are they? So, you know, we don't have exact records for a number of reasons. There's a, a lot of uh, stigma still associated with an infestation with head lice, which is really unfortunate because an infestation has nothing to do with personal hygiene, personal cleanliness, the cleanliness of your environment, whether it be your home or your classroom or school or place of work. They are purely a an, an opportunity infestation. So the CDC estimates between 6 and 12 million new head lice infestations in the United States every year in children between the ages of 3 and 11. And that doesn't then take into account the fact that once head lice come into a household, the chances of somebody else in the household getting it, a parent, a caregiver, a sibling, uh, is pretty significant. So minimum of 6 to 12 million new cases in this country every year. Okay, so pretty common then. <laughs> Very. Yeah. Yes. Um, do, do that. Do the does the head louse? Does it carry any kind of pathology, any disease, or anything like that? That is a great question, and it's really important to point out that a head lice infestation is nothing more than a medical nuisance. Head lice do not cause any long-term medical health uh, effects and they do not carry any diseases. So they're really just, they're just a nuisance. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned there's this large number that we see every year in the United States of new cases. Um, mm -hmm. How do people typically contract it? Head lice are almost exclusively contracted through direct head-to-head -head contact which is why we tend to see it more in younger children, uh, preschool aged through to middle school, 3 to 11 typically, because of the nature of their interactions and the nature of their play. They tend to play very closely uh, together, at least they did prior to the uh, 
the coronavirus pandemic, but they tend to play closely together. They tend to share objects. And then, of course, lately, with technology and, you know, the um, the selfie, we see it a lot more in middle school, adolescent, and even older uh, teenagers and young adults, people crowded around a computer screen to, to look at a video, people taking selfies. So it's almost entirely head-to-head -head contact. When, when that head-to-head -head contact occurs, a louse may take the opportunity to transfer from one head to another. Okay. Um, you talked about what they look like. Is that basically the method of diagnosis also is by just finding it and identifying it? Yes. You know, you can suspect it uh, based on symptoms, but here's a really in here's a couple of interesting facts. First of all, the first time somebody is exposed to head lice and they become infested, it takes on average about four weeks before they develop any symptoms. So they have had a head lice infestation for a month before any symptoms develop, which is why it's really not necessary to isolate and remove children from schools or classrooms once head lice are identified. That horse has left the barn a long time ago. Um, so, you know, it takes that long. And then the second interesting fact is that only 50% of people who have head lice will actually develop symptoms at all, which means half of the people with a head lice infestation will not get symptoms. So the typical symptoms that we think of with a head lice infestation is itchiness of the scalp. Then that can present as either frank itchiness with scratching or a sense of irritation or um, like a, a prickly feeling. Head lice tend to prefer areas uh, behind the ears and at the nape of the neck. But if you see a child whose scalp appears to be irritated, they're scratching a lot, um, then it may be very worthwhile to check their head to see if they have head lice. But because so many people don't get symptoms, being aware of the potential, being aware of how common an infestation is, it's a really good idea to be doing some preventative checks You know, once a week check your kids, look through their hair, and you just want to part it uh, and look look closely at the hair shaft close to the scalp. As I say, it's really hard to see a head louse. They tend to be kind of tan. An adult, as I said, is the size of a sesame seed. They move quickly through the hair. So it's going to be hard to see an actual louse, but if you see those little eggs cemented to a hair shaft that you can't move along the hair shaft, then you should for sure suspect an infestation, and that's when you'd want to see a professional. Okay, great. All right, let's switch gears a little bit. And uh, your organization, Lice Clinics of America, are reporting an increase in head lice activity during uh, this past spring. Uh, Dr. Lauer, can you talk about what LCA is seeing as far as numbers in head lice? Yes, it, you know, this is really interesting to us. So from our clinics that were open in April and May this year, we saw in general a 25% increase in head lice infestations from May over April of this year, which was kind of shocking given the fact that most families were staying at home during that time because of the COVID-19 um, disease. But what we've recognized is that because families were staying at home and family interactions are intimate, um, you know, we spend a lot of time closely together. Maybe we're all, you know, on the couch watching a movie or playing a game or in, you know, bed watching TV, uh, kids in bed with the parents, that kind of thing. Because of that uh, intimate interaction and the fact that we were all stuck at home, Kids probably brought head lice into the house, not recognized before the stay-at-home mandate. Mm -hmm. The penetration within the household because of the stay-at-home um, orders was much more significant. So rather than seeing a sibling or a caregiver who had become infested from the original infestation, we were seeing every family member being infested 
and the severity of the infestation was much greater because people had been at home for such a long period of time. All right. And I want to just be very specific to the to the listener. We are talking only about head lice. It's not body lice or, of course, pubic lice, right? Absolutely. Right. There are three different species. We are only talking about head lice. Um, they they look different when you see them under a microphone uh, under a microscope, and they um, they behave differently. Body lice can spread diseases which are very dangerous. Head lice do not. Right. Okay. Um, so let's let's dig into your expertise. Um, what advice do you have for parents concerning prevention and treatment of head lice? Well, I think the most important advice I have for parents, first of all, goes to the stigma associated with head lice, which is don't take this personally. This is not a reflection of you. This is not a reflection of your home uh, or where you send your kids for school or care. It is, it, you know, most people, when you talk to them, have a story about head lice. Almost everybody either knows somebody or experienced it themselves in their childhood or their children have been, you know, have experienced it. Based on the numbers, this is nothing to be embarrassed about. It is common. So the first advice that I have is when you identify head lice in your child, especially now with um, restrictions uh, about gatherings being lifted, kids and families, are, extended families and friends are getting together, the chances of spreading an infestation are increasing. So if you identify head lice, make sure that you call people that you've been in contact with. Call the parents of your children's friends. Let them know because the sooner you can intervene in an infestation, the less severe it's going to be. And then as far as just identifying head lice, as I said before, being aware that they're common, checking your child's scalp regularly. If you have any suspicions and uh, you're unsure, get it checked by a professional um, and make sure that you intervene early to prevent it spreading to other family members or other friends. Okay. And can you talk about treatment a little bit? Yes, absolutely. So there are... Um, the interesting thing is there are a number of over-the-counter head lice treatments that used to be highly effective. Now, these are all pesticide-based, and or the majority are pesticide-based, but over time, and in the 80s and 90s, uh, they were really effective at getting rid of head lice infestations. However, head lice have been around for thousands of years, actually, this is just a fun fact, Cleopatra was buried with a louse comb. So they've been around a long time. They are very adept at adapting. So over time, lice have evolved, and they are now genetically altered so that they are resistant to the pesticides in those pesticide-based over-the-counter products. So they're just, you know, people are frustrated because they go to the pharmacy, they spend their money, they take a lot of time uh, doing these treatments, and they simply don't work. Um, Life Clinics of America has an FDA-cleared medical device, which was developed in uh, the state of Utah by an evolutionary biologist at the University of Utah. And this is just an interesting story as well. He, his specialty, he studies lice, particularly bird lice, uh, but his kids came home with head lice, and he thought, well, you know, I'm one of a handful of lice specialists in the world. I should be able to manage this. And he couldn't get rid of their infestation uh, because these over-the-counter products don't work. And so he recognized from his lab that lice are susceptible to dehydration. So he developed a, a medical device, which is cleared by the FDA, which uses precision-controlled heated air. And the treatment takes about 30 minutes to do a whole head. But what it does is it dries and dehydrates and kills both the hatched lice and their eggs, and the eggs are the really difficult thing to get rid of. Uh, so an infestation can be uh, completely eliminated with a treatment that takes 
about uh, 30 minutes. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and close out with um, just giving you an opportunity, a little bit of time to talk about Life Clinics of America and, and some of the work that you guys do. Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, so Life Clinics of America is uh, a, com- it are a series of clinics. We have 200 clinics across the U.S. Uh, we're located in most states, and we use this FDA-cleared medical device called the Aralay to treat head lice infestation. So we're the lar- world's largest urgent care treatment center for head lice. We're also located in 36 countries. So we're a global presence. And what makes us different is, first of all, with the medical device, the RLA, we are able to eliminate an infestation because we can kill the hatched lice and their eggs. And we don't use any pesticides. So it's it's really a green and clean and effective and safe treatment for head lice infestations. Okay, great. And I'll go ahead and link to the LCA website in the show notes page when I publish the podcast. And I want to thank you, Dr. Krista Lauer, for sharing your time and your expertise with us. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed this conversation. Okay, great. Thank you, ma'am. Have a good day. Bye-bye.